Hello and welcome back to the Geek on My Sleeve channel. This is Geek Out number 106 over Lux, a Texas Reckoner novel by Brandon Sanderson and Stephen Michael Bowles. Bahals? Sorry for pronunciation on the last name. Um, I... So, it is a standalone in my humble opinion, but if you were taking chronological throughout what happens in it, I would say it's in between or during uh, book two and book three. And the reason for that is because we get Prof to mention Oh, since he knows what happened at New Cago, that epics can be killed. So, book one is New, Ca New Cago. And then, oh, we end up with another reference that I'm spacing out on. Mm. But yeah, I would say timeline-wise would be in between book two and three. Yeah, I agree with you there. Um, as we said before, spoilers ahead um, for the main series as well. But we know enough about Steelheart and the reckon or the um, epics are still very much in control of everything right now. Like we literally have a floating city picking people up and taking them to the promised land of ice cream and ferris go wheels and um getting our boots licked because there's no way it's real yeah i so like i said it could be a standalone but at the same time it does things differently where the original three emphasize more on the epics and how to kind of find out their weaknesses and the everyman struggle so to speak mm -hmm. where the texas reckoner or lux book four i enjoyed more of the uh motivator technology and yeah. it yeah, it, it explained other aspects that weren't as well explained in books one, two, and three. We we definitely um, got to see more of the world through a different lens, right? Because yeah, yeah. he um, grew up pretty much being raised as a Reckoner from age 11, the same age that a uh, prof is teaching science to. Um, and yeah pretty much becomes this ninja. I really, I really dig the sword thing. Like swords are his thing um, where I'm drawing a blank on the first series, the main character. Um, he was a guns. Kirito. Guy. Say what? Kirito. Kirito. <laughs> sword art online. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, that, that was my first big moment where, Oh, you don't bring a sword to a gunfight. Unless you're Actually. me, and then you do. <laughs> Says who? Um, yeah. Yeah, I had fun playing with all the technology and everything. Um, going behind enemy lines. The love story. Was it too I, much or just enough? So... It was predictable, but not the same. It wasn't too tropey? Or no, just from the previous series. Like, it mm -hmm. felt very similar to the original three, where mm -hmm. it was like, oh, I'm just an everyday Joe. Just kidding. I've now gone full Batman, and you murdered my family. <laughs> um, into... I've I've got feelings, but I can't express them. And she's gone. Just kidding. 
which i i guess throughout the original one it had a a different flavor for she was on the enemy team but then wasn't where this one hey, is ending, she though. was she was with us from day one became an enemy but not really but didn't have yeah just it, it was very similar but done tastefully different but you started off talking about how it was familiar enough though and you kind of want that in um a series right when you or pick it up it fits you want for it the, have... the young adult yeah theme. yeah yeah it still felt very much like a Brandon Sanderson book, even though he co-wrote it with, um, oh, I just had it pulled up. Apologies, guys. You know how bad we are with names. Or Stephen Michael, and then, yeah, I'm not going to try on that last name. B-O-H-L-S. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I should just start pulling the audio narrators do such a good job so speaking of airplanes spent so much time on tiktok oh are you talking about the one where it's like st start a fight in one sentence listening to the audiobook is the same as reading the book I think we lost them. Anyway, uh, yeah, Lux. Hey, it, it was a good addition. Um, so I guess my biggest thing with this Reckoner series is it follows the Brandon Sanderson theme, and I have a quote from another one that we haven't got to that I will be pulling eventually, but. The gist of it is, oh, yeah, I like the old stories. And then it talks about a bunch of mythological stories. And this person goes, yeah, like Satan. And everyone's like, what do you mean like Satan? And she goes on and she's like, yeah, he was totally the hero because he got thrown down into the pit and whatever and he's like oh everything's fine as long as we have each other and it's about the the perspective and you know what truly is evil and you may have opposing or opposite views and that doesn't make them right or wrong it's just the opposition um and this one didn't do it as drastically but, it, or I guess it, you, as much as the epics are destroying life as we know it and playing rulers, they still, it's very similar to book one where Steelheart tried to create his own society and, you know, make them all his minions, so to speak, but providing value or some structure to it. So, yeah, it, uh, it's not as drastic as some of his other series and uh, his other young adult series that I was referencing, uh, Starflight or Skyward. I think Starflight is technically the second book, but Skyward, it, uh, yeah, it really hit home and it really, there's a, a beautiful quote there that I need to pull. Are you back? I am back, and I had a lot of fun with book three. Um, definitely looking forward to that geek out. There's a reason why we're such big Brandon Sanderson fanboys. Yeah, I think um, he's... Like, I normally don't do a lot of young adult, but I think out of everybody, he's the one who I've done the most young adult content with. Yeah, you started with Mistborn um, yeah. and kind of skipped the whole... Uh, YA section. Yep. And I went into uh, era one, era two, and then Stormlight. Another amazing epic series. So much fun. The, um, yeah, even though they're young adult, 
it's um one of my top gifted series is the first one the reckoners and this one it added to the world really enjoyed seeing the other side of things um and i enjoyed getting steelheart's origin story yeah that that was pretty cool um and i had some mixed feelings about that because i i did too because his voice turned on him Mm, what he he, he technically was in hit. the special forces with mm-hmm. our guy who lost his leg mm-hmm. and he was he got the powers from calamity when it was happening and he turned on them he um hit him in friendly fire but I don't know. I, I could see it from Steelheart's perspective as well. He didn't shoot the first shot. One of his guys straight up unloaded a clip on him after um, friendly. It, it appeared like friendly fire. He was shooting laser beams from his hand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then I guess it doesn't quite match up as well with his origin story of his weakness, his people not fearing him, and that he Mm -hmm. used to be, you know, an athlete that didn't get a scholarship due to his rage, his rage issues. So I I wonder going from that to be a disciplined military figure, not not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying I've heard that they have pretty extensive, at times, um, psychological evaluations. Mm -hmm. Not to say that would disqualify. That might be what they're looking for. But, uh, well, there was some implication of special ops as its own. Like, um, our old bear was the guy that recruited him from security or something. Um. Yeah, sorry, pulling up notes. It uh, sticks with the theme of books in the other series where it's, you know, essentially a heist or a one job deal. Mm hmm. Yeah. Which is consistent with the other ones, right? Each book was built around a job, an epic we were going after. Yep. Mission accomplished. Time to go home. And I will say, I normally, this is like my first comment for books like this, but it wasn't the same. So I, there are only a select few who do the started from the end. Just kidding. Let me tell you how I got here. Um, but this one did it in such a manner where it was like started from the middle ish. Mm -hmm. Uh, just kidding. Here's my origin. So you get flashbacks and you get, you get the backstory, right? Yeah. And I, I can understand from the perspective of you need to get the reader hooked early. Um, it's hard so, to do well all the time hopping, and I felt this flowed pretty well. I, it took me the second time through to really uh, notice a transition when we like skipped over the scene that happened because it already happened in the beginning. Mm-hmm. But I probably also was poorly multitasking and doing other things through my first read through, so that could have been part of it. It's that's usually when I get my reading done as well. So. Or listening. David. Uh, trying to remember. David is from the main series. Yeah. Or, yeah, David Charleston. Charleston. Mm-hmm. Then Megan and Jonathan, Deidre's prof. Yeah, 
So, oh, I might be misremembering, but the lady's name, he started with an A, who was organizing stuff. Abigail? Man. Abigail? Mm -hmm. That wasn't the same Abigail from the original, or mm -hmm. was that a different lady? That was, I think you're thinking of Tia. Oh, okay. okay. Not, yeah. not Prof's girl. Um, but there's a handful. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Uh, I just forgot the names. I felt like it was similar, but yeah, Tia is not Abigail. Yeah. And then um, I believe I pulled up Coppermind. Uh, Abigail Brigan Herschel is our old bear. Wade, programmer. Zeph is um, our trainer. I, though I did thoroughly enjoy killing off Zeph early. Like, <laughs> I, I'm i sorry. <laughs> and it's almost to become a staple. Um, maybe I got journey. spoiled with... Gandalf has uh, to die. I was going to say, Lord of the Rings <laughs> did it well. Uh, Star Wars, you know, right. and Obi-Wan comes back. Right. Uh, we're going to not speak about... What is it? Oh, the one with Ren, The Last Jedi, or whatnot, where he comes mm. back as a ghost and then does silly stuff. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, I, I yeah, yeah, it it was it it fits for the apocalypse we have created, mm -hmm. and I wish he had a couple like better fight scenes. Um. You get some of it through the training and the character building and the flashbacks, right? Our thousand yeah, yeah. blocks. And he did, uh, we did get um, that scene when they go up the ladders and he falls into, I forget what it is, like Mok Choi or something like that. Or he, beforehand. Yeah, yeah. He's pretty much protecting the, the ladder for his team to get on there. Wade setting the pace up. So he's a martial arts um, or, yeah, the training yeah. definitely followed through, but you always want more combat, right? It was surprisingly lacking in combat, though. I guess we did. We did. We did our hyperbolic count, time chamber standing, standing on did, the post with the rocks. Yeah, we did no our. Training. Oh, what is it? Karate Kid type action for, you know, do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh apparently brandon or this other writer has a vendetta against oatmeal <laughs> and then, there were a lot of oatmeal boxes of oatmeal ko's yeah i think i'd rather uh, eat oatmeal than dog food though what was that yeah. Herschel talking about they're eating beans and dog food maybe you should uh make the dog food disappear i'll eat some bland oatmeal um yeah we we got a a tank during the end like there's some action combat for you and the, yeah. the fight with uh or the wasps um yeah i it, it fits with the genre of young adult so i wasn't too disappointed but yeah None of that Spencer energy talking about bringing um, orc skulls or whatever, making cups out of orc skulls. Yeah, like I, that's <laughs> that is the inverse. Uh, I, I guess I wouldn't I couldn't say that, but it is young adult in the angsty teenager mentality for that mm -hmm. series. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's a fun genre, the post-apocalypse. This... That's what Brandon always does well about. Granted, sidestep here, but I watched an interview of him when he talked about a spark or the part of the original idea of Mistborn. And he took Lord of the Rings where 
the hob you know they're supposed to take the ring to mount doom and destroy it but what happened if they you know went through this journey and got all, all the way to the end and he was like oh hey thanks you know i was wondering where i put that you know right. it was just like some everyday <laughs> joe casual like oh you know i lost that so long ago bit yeah and he does really well taking a concept and flipping it on its head like for this one you take everybody wants superpowers and we have forever and uh yeah this apocalypse that we got was not as exciting uh please re-roll um but right. it takes them and turns them into super villains and yeah i guess that's another reason why i feel like this one is technically book four but took place in between books two and three uh yet again spoilers uh because the end of book three we essentially get rid of calamity and they don't reference it as much in this one they reference like when it came about but not we, that we it is a couple gone. Of swear words you know oh calamity yeah yeah but it's not like because in one, two, and three, we get them looking up at Calamity in the sky, and we right. get a lot of emphasis of like that thing right there. Where I don't think we got nearly as much here. Um, but that's that's a good thing, I think, in um, especially in the genre, not reintroducing a lot of the same material. Like it did enough of talk about Calamity if it was a standalone, but if you really want to get more of like the impact and everything um cover a lot more in the main series but this we yeah. learned a lot yeah. more about the tech right yeah um, and i think there are a couple things that kind of made sense if you had read the others but wouldn't make sense elsewise where the whole realization of our guy who can heal being a gifter mm -hmm. like and the impact if you, it, like it doesn't say a whole lot of anything about it yeah our origin story was nicely connected with the other books yeah with uh prof and him talking about how steelheart could be killed yep. or not yep. exactly steelheart but he says well, well think about that Chicago. a little bit too with with steelheart and where he was at and how herschel reacted right like yeah. he needed people to fear him. And there was that period where Herschel's like, no, this, this is my buddy. This is my boy, like my brother. Hey, like we, we nearly failed the mission because we wanted to make sure you were okay instead of just drugging you. Um, and when the other guys were pulling triggers. So like he, yeah. Very well done. Um, Yeah, and then, so, like, as much as we did a lot with the motivators and we found out new technology for um, reversing the, uh, what's the words, uh, reversing the polarity or whatever the current going through it to invert the power, uh, we also had, oh, life force trying to graft other limbs onto himself and do things differently that way. Karen says, uh, it was interesting how fast the God complex set in for the new epics. I, I agree with that. Um, yeah. I find the, the epic backstories really interesting too, like how they got there and, um, just watching that all change. Yeah. Which yet again, book three really, I guess, emphasizes it. And yeah, the fact that Calamity is an alien and everything that how we perceive things is 
overstimulating and done in such a different manner that created the fear. Mm hmm. What What do you think about uh, was it the epilogue there with Paige and um, the voices, right? Because they were pretty much working on that epic serum, and oh, was it? So they, I'm drawing a blank on it. He, um, oh, not Lux. Lux is the city, but our our main OG who used to work at Target. Um, he was working on this serum with the Californian, and he stabs and injects something into Paige towards the end there. So, like, leading into just kind of like some fury or fan theory crafting if they continue the series the way her powers could scale because he was able to control some of the other epics powers right yeah um i yeah there there's a lot of room for growth in the series because of it <sighs> they're kind of like all connected anyway through calamity mm -hmm. and a I, I don't cool. really feel like it's oh i guess playing by zombie rules so to speak for like left for dead style where it's airborne so everybody has it but it's not been activated and because everybody has it we're all connected but Maybe it's more like nuclear radiation style where everybody has it, but it might mutate. It might not. Yeah. Like X-Men versus uh, My Hero Academia. Yeah. 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 Um. Superpowers would be a lot of fun. It's a it's it's a fun series. Yep, I enjoyed it. I definitely would like to see it continue. And um, I don't know. Initially, it was just supposed to be the first three in the series, and that was it. And you're like, man, we, we we just get to where it could be fun, right? When uh, uh, I could all... see three being an end, but I could also see it being many beginnings. Um, yeah, because we're dancing with uh, oh Megan's power and her pulling stuff from a parallel universe. And then they have different things going on it on in it. Um, and then, for example, now we have reversing uh, epic DNA to do the opposite. So instead of pulling the other space into our reality, you know, putting us into their reality, which we end up kind of doing anyway. Mm hmm. But yeah, a lot of potential and variables and just how everything changes after calamity well, too. And then you could also do kind of Bobaverse style where we're only one planet and this was a very young new calamity that came over here and did its thing and went on where our understanding is they're a whole species that are doing this everywhere. So, yeah. That's true. That's true. Um, so on the Copper Mind wiki, it says in 2019, Stephen Michael Bowles mentioned that he was working with Brandon on an expansion to the Reckoner's universe and had been quite given a bit of autonomy on the project. It was conceived as both a spin-off and a sequel of the original trilogy, following a different team of Reckoners from Texas 
as uh, you know, we got to see here. Um, anticipates writing three novels for the audio original format that would be consolidated as a sequel to print. Um, so two more in the series from that's yeah that's what i'm reading brandon mentioned a planned reckon reckoners project for mainframe in 2020 and again referred to the project as a trio of novellas in late 2020 and early 2021 steven posted a few updates about the development process on social media the working title was death rise um the team decided that pacing of the three novellas would work better as a single novel the novel is intended to stand alone has some overlap yeah so i guess maybe it is just a standalone okay so it's supposed to be novellas but then it got brought into one yeah uh karen mentioned what about the security force that couldn't die um i may be thinking of something else but with life force and how they would send down waves and waves of people and he would just essentially gift mm -hmm. the, the ability healing. to heal yeah i I don't know if I would feel like, or well, so that's another one of those morality issues where by killing the unkillable soldier or life flux or life force himself, you ended up killing an innocence that he had trapped. Um, yeah. Just it makes the numbers not look right it was interesting seeing the character conflict over that when they were talking about taking down the city um and the sacrifices that need to be made and herschel refusing to take charge um yeah Did you have a new favorite character for this book? Um, like oh, I really the got old, old bear guy who was missing the leg. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. He he was... Oh, I can't think of the guy's name in the Herschel? original series. Oh. Um, in the original series, we had Abraham, Cody... Or he Bell, was kind of Mindy. the Cody. Kind of. Yeah. So I also really enjoyed the the bucket book thing. It was pretty fun. It's all about human achievement. Mm-hmm. Achievements unlocked. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, the um, yeah. Did it scratch your Brandon Sanderson itch? Not really, but I I think it's because I was a little more hyped for the Skyward 3 that came out. And I probably listened to that like four times this week <laughs> instead of Lux. So I'm not like as in the zone as well right. as my sleep cycle and everything else has been thrown out of whack. Um, 
but thus is life. Busy time of year. Appreciate you guys hanging with us at the later time. Um, yep. The other challenge with that is, though, it has been just a long, long weekend. Um, but definitely look forward to it every week, hanging out, geeking out. It was for me. It was nice playing in the universe again. Um, but uh, I'm right there well, with you. I guess Skyward, or the third book in the Skyward series. I enjoyed it because it dealt more with the motivators and the potential there and expanding the universe in that light. But I was looking for more progression. And I felt like initially it was going to be something kind of like Mistborn Era 1, where we had 1, 2, 3, and then we had a time hop, time hop so to speak, into Era 2. And there were similarities that had more or less mutated. And that was more of what I was thinking it was initially going to be. Um, but it didn't work out that way. It's kind of a amalgamation or in the middle. So I, it's almost like a 0.5 or a side quest for me. Okay. Um, I agree with you there. Where like it did a lot of good stuff, had a lot of fun in the universe as a whole, but yeah, man, we left off three getting me super amped and excited for the parallel universes and him being able to see his father and oh. what's going to be the difference if there's not the direct influence of calamity making people the way they are, as right. well as, a, you know, just... Yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot of unanswered questions and directions I thought I was going to go. I'm right there with you. Right there with you. I have difficulties reading spinoffs. Um, like, huge Dune fan, have hardly read any of the quote-unquote side quests, right? Um, because there's just so much more in the main universe... That could be a lot of fun. Though this did it well by expanding the universe, which side quests do. Um, audio performance, as always, a lot of fun to listen to. Definitely need to get Skyward 3. Have we gushed enough about... Um, oh, it's not Skyward. I think it's Kryptonic. Or the name of the third book in the series. Yeah. Such awful fanboys. Let me pull up my Audible. Or, yeah, Kryptonic. C-Y-T-O-N-I-C. Cytonic. Or, yeah, Cytonic. Yeah. And the journey there. Sorry. Stop myself. Was about to start talking geeking out about that book but we're here for lux had a lot of fun with lux um it, it did answer a lot of the questions i had for the series though with just how the reckoners really worked because we really i guess we do get to go meet another team in book two so we kind of get to see some of the other cells um, hey, yeah, yeah, I guess that didn't, that wasn't something that answered the question. That was more just normal expected from the series. Mm -hmm. um, the part I thought was interesting with that was when, oh, our main guy asks, are you a reckoner? And Prof doesn't answer. And then he goes and he says, the Reckoners are the ones who are going to defeat the Epics. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the doubt of it. And then him coming back before the Lux expedition or whatever. And him saying, or being really excited about reversing the action potentials. Mm -hmm. Or the... So... 
I, I have I have a question for you about that with uh, Prof and Jax. So we've said before on the streams, we don't talk too much about our personal lives, but like we're both dads. Um, so Prof was originally going to take him to the equivalent of Disneyland in this post-apocalyptic world, you know, go where he could, as Jack says, like eat ice cream and, you know, do fun stuff, et cetera, et cetera. But instead he made the choice to take him to, they're, they're literally like abusing this kid, right? Like in the modern age, you have a kid stand on a post or just leave him out dehydrated um you know no flinch games like all that stuff um i don't know just like it reminds me of the moment or the when we talk about um like reading the same book later on in life like the stuff as like as a dad reading this is like you know who who is he to say like hey you know I'm so passionate about this mission that we're going on. Like, I'm going to take you to this pretty much boot camp to become a, a child soldier is essentially what he is. Um, granted, they didn't throw him into harm's way until he was practically an adult. Um, I don't know. Thoughts? Uh, so in one direction, it reminds me a lot of I have your best interests in mind. And after following that path, no, no, you don't uh, <laughs> try again. And on the other side of things, this is a post apocalypse. And there has been a measure of success from the choices that were made and the opposition is you know oh i think uh in the second reckoner book i can't remember if it's adam or or if it's cody who says it where he's like you can have oh no never mind i'm thinking he who fights with monsters they i'm with he you. who fights together. with monsters does it really well I'm trying to remember most of the quote it's essentially like you can have that easy life but when something bad happens, they have to wait for me and it's OK. You know, I'll put in the work. I'll have those hard days to mm -hmm. protect them. But when things happen, they don't have a choice. So, yeah, that's that's Jack's, though. Like, he's like, hey, this is why I want to do it. And he's the one making the choice. He's not getting forced into it. Uh, and and I guess that was another thing, like there was that moment uh, or well, several moments of, you know, there's a door and yeah. you can walk out. Why? Why are you really doing this? And just constantly putting it into perspective. Mm -hmm. Not that it was easy, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, in a post apocalyptic world where people are fighting to survive. He had food. He had shelter. Definitely got his exercise. Um, and learned to become a super ultra ninja assassin. Killing uh, or eliminating oatmeal boxes in the garage. Karen said they had a few battles with them. Probably not enough for Peter. Yeah, and it wasn't like really combat. It was like kind of combat. You know, we're going up against Life Force, the big bad. And we throw our sword and we zap him for a little bit. And it was like... They're assassins, though. What? They don't have anybody yeah, that but can it take was... that. Like uh, prop. it was a one shot, and then it was a bunch of waiting, and then it was like just kidding, and then it was like, oh, really? And then, yeah, I think the most combat we got was the flashback of our girl when how she became a raven. Mm hmm. 
saved by a minivan because they're, they have to be indestructible to survive kids. And then, yeah. They did put in a lot of hours of training. And for, we've talked about it before, like the sniff check, um, taking them down. They're assassins, you know, and they have people that train and train and train. Or, yeah, it's not they, designed to be a, a toe-to-toe scenario. Mm-hmm. And they lost a whole bunch during that first wave while he was off hanging out with the Californian. Yeah, but we also saw that from one, two, and three. Like, if we're a young adult and we have only so many pages, we need to trim down the team to a five-man party. Yeah. Not not, not that I was expecting them all to go splat, but... Would, would you from... read... Would you read the series if, like, um, Brandon Sanderson made something on, like, uh, the Stormlight or the Mistborn size? Where they can so, go and get into the details, get more of the backstory. I, I think it wouldn't do nearly as well in the young adult space. But I think there is definitely a lot of potential because what he's currently doing in Stormlight, or not currently, but what he has done in Stormlight for just explaining the Spren and the abilities and the bond and the projection of an idea creating bounds on the world and that being what is what it is. Mm -hmm. I think in this universe of Calamity, modifying people more or less to alter their dna and them having action potentials that nobody else has to do things and then we're getting into the mutation of them or adding additional ones i think he could definitely describe or magic the beepy to beep out of it and there's a lot of potential as well mm -hmm. as, like, there is so much ever-expanding universe of Calamity is just one of the many aliens that came to this one place. That's true. And so we have all the other aliens do, meeting do aliens and traveling between stars go, and go using Megan's power to go to parallel universes that have different things that have happened yeah like there there is a lot that he could expand upon but it doesn't necessarily fit with the young adult genre yeah uh karen was asking what is your favorite scene hmm So I, I have a couple that are up there. Um, it partially scores a lot of points because Prof was in there, but that moment when he comes to check in on them after Paige and Jax have been doing some training and he sneaks up through the air vent, you know, to oh, spy on Seth and he finally gets like that, that compliment. Um, yeah. I don't know. The Steelheart origin was good. Our, oh, I can't remember her name. Our female fighting off the Raven after Page. being saved by the minivan was a good one. Uh, when we're dealing with life force and he's like, I'm not immortal. You know, yes, I feel pain, this, that, and the other. So you get the combination of, oh, I'm a gifter, so I don't feel the same emotions that other epics do, which we learned from, you know, book three. Mm -hmm. um, but then as more and more stuff happens, he starts to get that rage and that, those other emotions. 
Mm -hmm. The God Complex. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed how, um, you know, like it was a big deal figuring out Herschel's leg and how he lost it. And it turns out to be how Steelheart, you know, the title yeah, of his the origin first story. Book. Yeah. Yeah. Solid nod. Solid nod. Yeah, that that was a beautiful tie in. MVP for the book? Mm. Uh, depending on how the whole page thing works out, uh, the Californian? <laughs> nah, I guess that, that doesn't. That's uh, not what I really well mean, played, but well that's played. just because I'm excited for potential going forward. Ah, uh, she has all the power. I don't know. I guess I enjoy Wade. And that was another one of those like weird deja vu moments where I'm pretty sure we had a Wade. In another one of his series. What is Deadpool? For 500? Uh, no, because I could have sworn it was a Brandon Sanderson thing where it's like, oh, Wade Watts, because his, oh, her, his, his dad too? thought it would be a... Is it like Wax and Wayne? No. Well, or who's who's our main guy of the original series? Original three here. David? Oh. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. We're not the best with names. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to type stuff. Do it. Spell Wade. W A D E. Oh, it's Ready Player One. Okay, never mind. There we go. I've heard good things about Book Two. We picked it I've up. I've heard good and bad things about Book Two. We, we, we should answer the question because we don't have enough uh, geek outs in the queue to come up. Um, I, I mean, it's it's one that I picked up knowing that I would want to talk about it, but I just haven't gotten to it. Um, a lot of the negative comments were like, hey, it's literally a clone. There's nothing new. There's nothing exciting. Look at book one, change a couple names. There's book two. But I haven't hey, been through it myself. If, so if the formula I works. Yeah, I'm curious. Hey, no, nope. Book one is world building. <laughs> book two is political. Book three is God or God complex. And I can take on the world. Uh, four is the double takes i was doing this this whole time you didn't even see it coming uh five is you're still alive uh yeah yeah good times good good times i'm a sucker for a long series though i will say the movie and the book are not the same. I'm not saying like one is better than the other. I'm like saying fundamentally. Oh, they changed a lot. The, the concept as like maybe one point. It, it's like saying book four here, who literally only has prof and a Steelheart flashback is the same as books one two and three no no it's not uh, there are some causal connections but yes yes the book is almost always better well no no no. because most of them are like i am a book i am a 
different media. Now I'm going to do it in a visual medium and have to omit certain things. Right. And that was like, yeah, so this is the color blue. <laughs> and we take it to an artist and um, no, actually blue is really the absent of green, yellow, red, other colors. So we're going to use all those other colors and pretend it's the same thing. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. And what happened when those powers combined? Captain Planet. Oh, man. That, never mind. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Um, final thoughts on the books? So, what you read was not very conclusive on if this is book one from our guy of three or if his three turned into one. Uh, there's definitely one. room to continue the series from the original three or from the ending of four here. I yeah, think you should just spend more time on Skyward, but uh, I'm... That, extra enjoying that series that that was going to be my follow-up question to that like is it so much that we're you know not super like, in love I, or like i, I want more of love this other the epic concept goodness. i enjoy the hero's journey i enjoyed the unique magic system so to speak for the technical aspects of being able to take dna and create powers that come of them and being able to reverse it and being able to pull stuff from parallel dimensions to come in and fight our battles but i lost a lot of faith in this one because it was the same story batman you killed my family I want revenge. It was unique, and now it's superheroes that have evil powers. Mm -hmm. But we essentially figured it out, you know, crack the code in the end of book three. Um, yeah, I guess it's, it, yeah. Well, well there are said. other things that were more interesting in this current time. Challenge of having so many good books and loving how often Brandon Sanderson gives me more of his epic goodness. Well, and that's where another quote from Brandon Sanderson write every scene as if it's going to be somebody's favorite. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of good scenes here, there but were. he killed it in his other young adult <laughs> series. <laughs> You know, it's a good problem to have when you're competing with your other good books. So, uh, Karen, you're on it. She's got another question. Um, what do you think of the Traitor Reckoner? Yes. So. Is that Brigand? Oh, man. Like, I had a whole internal rant when I initially heard this. And I was like, damn it, it's always the pretty boys who got to go and fuck stuff up. You need and, to be suspicious of those guys. Or, well, it, I went off on a whole side tangent, internal monologue style, where I was like, and that's why I played Horde, because <laughs> the, that freaking Leroy Jenkins the Horde. was Alliance and, you know, the pretty boy who always wiped the raid. That's true. It's true. Um, but in the realm of this universe, I did. I, it's it is a great literary device to show the opposition of everybody else's moral dilemma. Essentially, the whole reason our main guy is fighting is to be able to provide a safe place that mm -hmm. others can have ice cream and others can have all these special things, even if he doesn't get to enjoy them himself. Essentially, this guy was going to lose the ability to do that. He was going to, you know, die. So by doing it, he's able to save save himself. And 
yeah, it, it was just another journey for them to go go along. Um, I wouldn't it, like it's it's a moral struggle throughout most of this, and that's one thing that Brandon Sanderson does really well throughout all his books is the person who you love to hate. It's kind of like Game of Thrones and the Kingslayer or Jamie Lannister, where at the beginning there was this deep visceral visceral hatred. Like, why would you push the sky out this window and why are you doing it with your sister into dang? Thanks for pushing that guy out that window. He's now the three eyed raven. And uh, yeah, you know, he ends up redeeming himself throughout the story. Mm hmm. But Brandon Sanderson does it in a different way where the people who you love to hate are just doing it for the things that they love. So, yeah, yet again, uh, oh, Cytonix, book three in the Stormlight does, or not Stormlight, uh, Skyward has an amazing quote, and I will find it and yes, make please. a whole rant about how if you are to read any Brandon Sanderson books, listen to this quote, internalize it, and thank me later. Is that going to be uh, up on TikTok, your other quote of the day? Uh, I need to get it, but yeah. Challenge accepted. Um, in regards it's like to... whole video worthy. I like it. Um, yeah. With brigands who betrayed them, it's um, it's believable and like, yeah, it's surprising they weren't asking themselves if somebody was going to flip. I know it's very easy to get into the mindset of, hey, we're going to take this fight, but they literally they literally think it's a utopia at that point, right? Well, that and he's followed the theory before with the whole retirement package meant that, mm -hmm. you know, he was ready to give it up before. Mm -hmm. True. And a lot of his core to his character has been influenced when he got hit with the shrapnel and when everybody else died. I, yeah. 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 A and lot of and we saw it care about in dying. the, you know, Book one, Reckoner. Except for it was Megan. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like that's... Always those pretty boys. Philosophy, philosophy for, you know, why they don't know anything about the other cells and why someone saying they're a Reckoner holds zero weight. Makes sense. Um, yeah. What we got going on next week, Pete? Uh, did I set that up? Mm, yeah. Ooh, okay. wow. This is another Whoops. one I've been listening to. I haven't um, gotten to it yet, so I'm going to need uh, your help. Uh, we, 107 of videos we could do a handful of little videos just with all the revelations that come up in uh, anima but sorry go ahead uh, yeah this is geek out 107 book six in the arterian archive by dennis vanderkirken and dakota kraut i have not gotten to it yet but it sounds like carl has so if you want to do a yeah. thingy it it for me, um, this series, we're really getting into the world building, which is a lot of fun. Um, if you are a fan of any of Dakota Kraut's series, this is um, the Wizard of Oz, the man behind the, the screen, the curtain, whatever, piecing all the magic together. And then, um, oh, in the Divine Dungeon series... I really enjoy how the accumulate power and I start off with just, they need to pretty much like cleanse their body of corruption. Right. And then start accumulating essence and experience. But once you bind to a law, um, it's not just accumulating power. Like some of it is, but then it's like, 
you have to become your ideal, right? And or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as you progress, oh, when you get the into first, the mana, the first one is like you bonding to it. The second mm -hmm. one is like you strengthening your bond. And the S, once you hit the S ranking, it's becoming an embodiment or, yeah, you mm -hmm. are the law in the world, so to speak. And then the heavenly is you are the concept of the law applying forces on other things. We get a lot more of that in book six, which is a lot of fun. And as um, Dennis Vanderkirken let us know, we do get to see some of the original cast and crew from the Divine Dungeon series, which is exciting. Very well done. That and some Wisp lore as well. Um, yeah. And then after we that, go? we have Awaken Online. Uh, this has been on our list for a while, has been recommended several times because of all the lit RPGs that we enjoy. Um, they have quite a repertoire or a, I, I want to say several books in the series, and we have several of them. But with that being said, I haven't started it yet. So I know it was highly recommended due to our lit RPG love. Um, yeah, I, I think we've been, this has been on our uh, to read list since like 2019. Yeah. Recommended constantly. Everybody talks about it. One of the uh, the big titles. It's going to be interesting because um, we've talked about it before going into a series, the anticipation and the expectations you set for it. And at this point, you have probably, what, 150 um, lit RPG genre books under your belt? Yeah. Maybe yeah. more. And I guess they do a couple... I I don't know. It might seem like they're doing something like Chris Fox does, where they have like parallel series that aren't parallel. Yeah, yeah, more side series or whatnot, or like very similar series name but not the same. I don't know. Anyway, because I'm looking at this and I'm confused because it says there's another one, Awaken Online Book 8, but in the series of Awaken Online, it's Book 5. So, like, oh. are there a bunch of side series or yeah, side quests in the middle? Or We, we almost don't, I don't know. Anyway, there's, there's a lot order, though, in the series. Right? What's up? Say, so we almost always go publication order when it comes down to it. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Um, or did they already do the new Wheel of Wheel Time series? Yeah, I and was asking totally different topic. What do you think of the new Wheel of Time series on Amazon? Uh, first off, I think that's the only series that I did not finish. Um, and that yeah. was because I was in the middle of a lot of faster pace books at the time. And I just, yeah, I it's strong, was struggling it's keeping of track of everything. Travel. Yeah, I I was following it pretty closely there for a while. And um, I believe they even had Brandon Sanderson in to kind of help consult with Wheel of Times. And he's very involved. So I'm very optimistic about it. But I've seen a lot of mixed reviews. And or, but wasn't it, that Brandon's big breakout moment that's, because yeah, he that's how finished I found the series? Him. And that's the only reason I want to go back, honestly. I, like he, I he makes it so much better towards the end and introduces his like epic 
magicness and like still stayed true to wheel of times yet made his made it his own by the end which is kind of like hard to do and that's how i found brandon like he had just started um mistborn at that time um already had elantris out and about uh but yeah oh so cautiously optimistic but the point i was going to say is like some of the feedback and reviews i've gotten compared it to what you did with ready player one pete where it's like it's similar but there were still some things that didn't stay true to the characters like maybe as a standalone kind of like with ready player one it's good but if you're looking for a truly authentic adaptation um and again i haven't seen it cautiously optimistic try not to be too much of a book snob well um, i'm i'm sorry but there are different levels and it's kind of like a movie trying rank. to compete with like walt disney or lucas arts yeah. like you're not going to spend thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars on an orchestra to you know do all your epic movements and moments and you don't have the kind of budget to compete or it's similar to like movies in my humble opinion are almost obsolete um in the sense that like i normally don't have that much time to dedicate to it uh hashtag marathon mode i say that but then i end up watching like five or six episodes there uh, is no only one anime episode but then you get into things like game of thrones where already game of thrones is long for the book series but they had the budget to make you know movie studio quality long epic stuff I think Wheel of Time's up there on budget. It's Amazon, so well, we yeah. Know but not then you have—I don't—I don't know. I guess it's very paradoxical because then you have you know YouTube sensations like Mr. Beast, who is currently about to get sued by Netflix because he wanted to work with them. They said no, and he was like, "I'm gonna do it anyway." With this all Squid Game nonsense, yeah. which I still haven't watched. I have finally started it. It's it's fun. It's good. All I know is there's a concept of people who suck at life, get into debt, uh, get a chance to play a death game to not be in debt. Yeah. Something yeah. about some old dude. And uh, it's it's kind of a battle royale, but not a battle royale. Pick different games. The more of you that die, the more money you make. Yeah. Anyway. Oh. Um, always taking book suggestions, movie suggestions. Peter and I keep going back and forth about expanding out of uh, just audiobooks and geeking out and reviewing other Medium mediums story and their epicness well be honest. it gets complicated and i need to do a lot more reading on oh fair use and laws and whatnot because i true. think it at least as of currently in the book community no plug publicity is bad publicity so the fact that sometimes i utilize the audio and i don't get out the disclaimer this is for review purposes only could come back and be silly but at, yeah those other mediums it yeah it's true you keep up with it more than i do but um especially when it comes to music with other streamers last thing we want to do is get in trouble with youtube yep yeah. Anyway, uh, I would say that concludes it for this stream. I really enjoyed Lux as an addition. Uh, not really sure what's going on elsewise. 
it seems like every time a short story comes out from Brandon is when he gets bored or hits a roadblock with any of his longer winded stuff. Like that's his relaxation or relaxation or his reset. He said it's to do something quick. Yeah. So will we get more? Time will only tell. Book book three was supposed to be the last one, and then we got a four. So we've heard it all before. Well, and that's that's like this TikTok that I saw. Um, you never stop clapping. It's just the time in between your claps gets longer. And to that, I say a book series or a universe is much like energy, where energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be transferred. So a story can never truly die. Ever. Yes. Yes. And on that note, we'll clap our way out and hope to geek out with you guys. Bye. Bye. Hope to geek out with you here soon.